I'm going to ask a favor of each of you. We all have a place that we go to for our rejuvenation, a place where we emotionally rekindle ourselves, a place where when we find the juices have run out and we're just not quite as energized as we want to be, we have a place that we go to. I'm going to stretch that a little bit. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. I want you to think of a song, a piece of music, a film, photographs, a poem, a passage from literature, some place that you aesthetically identify with. Thank you. The chords of color for a cause speak to the places where you go, the places where we all go. The chords are those chords that an artist uses for his, her, or their art form. A guitar chord, piano chord, a vocal chord for theater, musical chords for dance. The chords of our life that are audible and that move us through our daily lives. The colors in the chords of color are the colors that are identified with various cancers. There are 30 some cancers that have an identifying color, and there's probably some debate about some overlapping and whether one is really truly demarked for that or not, but we're very familiar with the pink ribbon for breast cancer, yellow for testicular, black malignant melanoma, and so on. The 30 colors that are behind me, lavender is the overriding color for all cancers. Chords of Color for a Cause is a program that we put together through the University of Florida Performing Arts. The idea was stimulated watching Major League Baseball on Mother's Day. Pink bats, pink ribbons on uniforms, pink ribbons on the bases, pink wristbands for the umpires, pink all around. Then the National Football League took it forward with pink shoes, pink wristbands again, pink helmets. Last night, the University of Florida Gymnastics team did their link to pink, identifying publicly, in this case, primarily breast cancer. Our idea was, let's get some artists who are cancer survivors. Let's get some artists who are in remission. Let's get some artists who have had an experience where they've lost a loved one, or where they have escorted somebody through to a healthy remission. And we started Chords of Color for a Cause. We have done eight to date. The program is going to change its name and focus, and it's going to be known as a program for all seasons. It'll be one in the fall, one winter, one spring, and one summer. So it's never out of our thinking. There's always an awareness of this particular program. Tied with that program, we have physicians in our community with the Cancer Center who are phenomenal. There's an intersection where where you go for that place that you rejuvenate yourself, the intersection of where you go when you have physical needs to be taken care of by a physician. So the program went one step further. Not only do we have artists that are performing who are cancer survivors, we do a lunchtime discussion with a member of our community in the Cancer Center who's doing research on the cancer that that artist had or the cancer that they escorted somebody through. They're talking about the advances being made. They're talking about the hopes for the future with the science. They're with the artist. The artist then talks about the cancer from their heart, from their gut, from their experience. There's no stage. There's no spotlight. There's no surgical room. It's two people. It's a physician, and it's an artist. There's one topic, cancer. Two approaches, science and the arts. The Native American civilizations were very advanced in how the healer and the artisan were one and the same. The healer would provide mechanisms for prosperity, mechanisms for wellness, mechanisms for a fruitful life. They would tie in during the healing process just as they did in the spiritual process. I'm going to share some stories of 
artists that we have had in very quick vignettes. There's a dance company. It's in New York. It's titled Ryu. The artistic director is Pascal Ryu. The associate artistic director is his wife, Joyce, former Martha Graham dancers. They started their company in 1994, and no sooner started it than Joyce was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Pascal took the company and created a piece called Prelude Tonight to the music of Maurice Ravel. The piece is in three parts. It's a travel, it's a journey. It goes through time, space, and emotion. Joyce was the lead dancer. There was a period in which the lead dancer comes onto the stage, turns her back to the audience, and disrobes. And where her clothes are taken is in the plastic bag that we all see when we are experiencing time in the hospital. In place of that, she was put in a white robe, the patient, and was escorted off stage. The piece becomes violent. The piece gets very dark. The piece ends very happily. The lunchtime discussion, Pascal Rieu addressed the group and said, I've never articulated this. I was exercising the demon from her body. She, her response, she was a deer in headlights. She said, you're trying to kill me. He said, no, I was killing the cancer. She's in remission. The company is alive. They took that story and created art around it. Ronnie Arbo has a group called Daisy Mayhem. She is an artist a folk artist out of New England, and a family artist. Diagnosed with breast cancer, first time we had her on our stage, she was wearing a wig. She had just started chemotherapy. After a double mastectomy, she went with her family on a picnic. Wonderful picnic out in the woods. All of a sudden, it's hot. The day is long, and the people start stripping down and swimming. For the first time in her life, she realized that she could strip down and go swimming also, because she was built just like the guys. It was freeing for her. What she found was, through her music, she's got a great song, if you want to sing out, sing out. Ray Johnston, 24-year-old guy, a banker in Dallas, was with the Dallas Mavericks on a summer program, summer team. He was doing the workouts and actually had made the Mavericks preseason squad. After a workout, the trainer called him over. He said, I want to see something. I want to see the back of your calf. And he looked and it was bruised. And Ray said, I think, you know, I just got, I got kicked out there. He said, do me a favor. Why don't you go to the University of Texas Medical Center and want that checked out? Ray did. He had leukemia. He's had it five times. He was on our stage. He has put together a rock and roll band that's sponsored by the owner of the Dallas Mavericks, who is now his patron saint to create the support around his music. He is able to articulate his leukemia, his art as being part of the wellness for him. After he was leaving us in Gainesville, he was on his way to Nashville, Tennessee, to meet with his donor, his organ donor. Each of these artists have a space, the baseline of color, and then the white space that becomes our lives to get to the color at the top. How do we do that? How do each of us do that? We go to those places. George Harrison, known most from his work with the Beatles and as a solo artist, died in 2001 of lung cancer. Gary Wright, who was a friend of his, a fellow musician who traveled with him, Used to be with a group in England called Spooky Tooth. He has the song Dreamweaver. He and George traveled the world together. Gary was with us this summer in a program called Hippie Fest. We used a group called the Fab Faux, who replicate Beatles music to the note. They're not a tribute band. They don't dress like the Beatles. They play the music of the Beatles. They've got the hog's head horns with a piccolo trumpet so they can do strawberry fields. They've got the Tangerine Dream strings so they can do the softer melodies. Gary talked about 
George Harrison's life in transition as he was passing from lung cancer. He related in the lunchtime discussion, George said, don't shed tears, don't be sad. My spirit is what you know. My spirit is who I am. My body is the vessel that has allowed me to be a part of the material world. It is not me. I will live on. Gary brought that forward and said the Eastern philosophy about healing has a lot to do with where we go to find those places for emotional rejuvenation. For George Harrison, it was spiritually back in and where he was. His song, I'll Follow the Sun, is a very optimistic leading step forward. Barbara Padilla is a soprano living in Houston from Mexico, took second in America's Got Talent with her interpretation of Ave Maria, was told by the judges it was probably the best interpretation of Ave Maria that that show had ever experienced. She ended up in Houston as a result of being in, having identified Hodgkin's lymphoma while she was in Guadalajara. She came to the Houston Medical Center, the cancer, St. Morrison Cancer Center. They did radiation, they did chemotherapy, and they told her, in all likelihood, you're not going to be able to sing again because of the burning of the vocal cords. Her initial depression at that turned to conviction. She went to the University of Houston School of Music, auditioned for the music program, was accepted, given a full ride, completed her master's degree, and is now singing with opera companies around the world in symphony orchestras because she found the resolve within herself and the assistance of the medical profession to take it forward. We're all in this together. No stage, no spotlight, no operating room until you need them. Once you exit that space, you're on your own. Beth Nielsen Chapman, a tremendous singer-songwriter who's written for Tanya Tucker, Willie Nelson, a number of us, she lost her husband to cancer. When he was going through chemo, he viewed the chemo as he viewed the commercials on television for Drano. He says, it's, just, it's gonna clean me out. He did not have a successful remission. Shortly thereafter, Beth was diagnosed with cancer. She went to a psychotherapist who said, you can't use the same avenue your husband used. You can't look at this as Drano because it's going to kill you. That's not where your spirit is. You need to look at it as a fresh stream. It's a stream of fresh water that's cleansing you. She did, went into full remission, and her son came to her and said, Mom, we're going to beat this together. The blank screen is yours. The trip we take, we do it with the doctors, we do it with our friends. It's about community. We need to demystify the C word that is cancer. We need to re-emphasize the C word that is community. That's who we are. It's about the arts, it's about medicine, it's about a cause. We are gonna make this disease go away. We're gonna do it together. We're gonna take care of each other. We're going to use the physicians for their scientific research and their advances. We're going to use our spirit to build upon. We're going to go to those places where we find our own energy, our own emotion, our own conviction of life. Because we're all better as a group, stronger as a team, and more successful with a focus. Thank you. <laughs>